glory be to the triune god reverend dr k m jawadachan reverend dr rajiv mathivachan reverend dr nainan k jawadachan professor joseph varghese sir very reverend dr mathiu vaidin corpus compa dear colleagues friends at the outset let me appreciate very much this initiative of our seminary to come on right a blessed memory and glorious contributions of our beloved legendary bishop dr paulus mar gregorius along with you i was also eager to listen to the vice chancellor of mahatma gandhi university dr sabu thomas an eminent scientist a reputed scholar and a prolific writer according to the original plan my responsibility was just to give a response to his main presentation but all of a sudden when i was informed that he would not be delivering the main presentation and i was asked to do the same my comfort was really shattered i was planning to be like a small plant under the shadow of a huge tree but the burden of the main presentation came upon me but the presence of uh, reverend father dr k m george an exemplary theology and a great guru of our parus mar gregorius thirumeni studies fills the unexpected vacuum abundantly already from his introduction we could sense that may the holy spirit continue to bless us through our discussions on paulus mar gregorius vision of liberation of science and technology towards humanization of the world after the enlightening introductory talk of moderator respected kem george i think that some of the points i would like to discuss in this paper will be more digestible to you the advance of technology has of course brought to humanity incalculable blessings it has made life safe comfortable intelligent with the possibility for worldwide relationships better food and medicines better houses better education better means of travel and better means of communication it has greatly reduced infant mortality and added to the life span of human beings technology has raised our living standards and life expectancy the digital revolution has transformed our world beyond imagination slowly transhumans athinte bhagamayitta pala chippugalum nammade okke brainil varanayittu saathriyundu angane okke varumbol parikshe eduvunnathinte velli struggle onnum chalappam illa irikku ippol thanne kottayam thulla chala schoolukal ninnu polum singapore okke tourne kondu povunnu കുറച്ച് വർഷങ്ങൾ കഴിയുമ്പോൾ സെമിനാരിയിൽ നിന്ന് പോലും സ്പേസിലേക്കും മറ്റ് പ്ലാനറ്റിലേക്കും ഒക്കെ പിക്നിക്കിന് പോകാൻ 
ഇടയാകുമെന്ന് നമുക്ക് ചിലപ്പോൾ സ്വപ്നം കാണാൻ പറ്റും ദ ഡിജിറ്റൽ റവല്യൂഷൻ ഹാസ് പ്രൊഫൗണ്ട്ലി ട്രാൻസ്ഫോംഡ് പൊളിറ്റിക്സ് ബിസിനസ് എഡ്യൂക്കേഷൻ ആൻഡ് റിലീജിയസ് തിങ്കിങ് വി ഓൾ നോ ഹൗ ഫേസ്ബുക്ക് ആൻഡ് ട്വിറ്റർ വി ആർ യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ ബ്രിങ്കിങ് ദി അറബ് സ്പ്രിങ് മോർ ദാൻ വൺ തേർഡ് ഓഫ് ദ വേൾഡ് പോപ്പുലേഷൻ are already internet users and thus social media users cyberspace has brought to postmodern youth a heightened consciousness of togetherness and of human solidarity contributions of nano science and nano technology is also tremendous however it was technology without being guided by wisdom that brought about holocaust concentration camps gas chambers genocides mass destruction of world wars and hiroshima nagasaki tragedies the nazis who killed 6 million jews have done this most inhuman task most scientifically the loss of men women and children in the second world war is estimated to be beyond 50 million the development of long range weapons and drones and push button technology has helped the operators to annihilate their opponents without any prick of conscience in the mahabharata war it was when arjuna confronted his own family members and gurus on the other side of the war he grew faint heart it was when emperor ashoka experienced by seeing the pain of the soldiers who were wounded in kalinga war and also the decay of the corpses of some of the soldiers he repented and became an exponent of peace but today technology is killing the sensitivity of humans and making them more efficient in exterminating others without any sense of pain or inhibitions the thinkers and pioneers of industrialization considered that conquering and taming nature was a mission of the human race the consequent extravagant consumption in the mass production responding to the rising expectations of a materialistic society was disastrous the enormous overuse of natural resources led to global warming floods hurricanes deforestation habitat destruction soil erosion species endangerment and extinction water pollution acid precipitation and nuclear waste so technology is both a blessing and curse how we are using it is the most important thing it is in this context that we have to discuss about porus mar gregorio's teaching about science and technology most of us know about the glorious life and outstanding contributions of metropolitan disgrace paulus mar gregorius mar gregorius was a great doctor who worked hard to heal the church and society through a vision therapy he shrewdly examined the modern world diagnosed its ailments and prescribed medicines for the restoration of its health for example his books religion and dialogue and the secular ideology are prescriptions to heal the illness of religious fanaticism and to promote a peaceful society the human presence is a prescription to address the issue of ecological crisis healing a holistic approach is one to address the inadequacy of the monoculture of western medical practice and his book science and science technology and the future of humanity as well as science for sane societies are prescriptions for curing the illnesses of science and technology 
with a sound orientation for the right use of these for the humanization of the world. He wanted to make the church a healing presence in the world. Mar Gregorio's theological and philosophical therapy was meant to liberate religious communities, especially the church, from ghetto mentalities and to encourage an integration of religious and secular approaches towards a just and peaceful world. If applied properly, the medicines recommended are useful for developing a healthy faith and also a commitment to shape our world meaningfully. So the doctor mar the prescription. Why can we live on here? Now the kodutta medicine wangi chubiyo chhu erinjan. Ola re sauki ma. No arne valiya. Tin venue da. E prescriptions books of a wai chhu kan pralpam paniya. But if it is applied properly, there will be healing for the world and individuals. We have mastered our surroundings, increased food production, built cities, established empires, and created far-flung trade networks. But did we decrease the amount of sufferance in the world? This is a pertinent question raised by the famous author Yuval Noah Harari at the end of his uh, book, Sapiens. One of the primary concerns of Mark Gregorius was also the human being. Harari presents in a secular way how men who began as an animal in this planet tend to be a dangerous god in the passage of time. Whereas Mark Gregorius presents human being in a holistic way focusing on what men ought to become with the high divine potential to become like God. Mar Gregorios, a unique bishop of Malangara Orthodox Syrian Church, a versatile genius of the 20th century who could shine as an ecumenist, philosopher, educationist, theologian and prolific writer, was well versed in the philosophy of science and technology also. There was a unique conference of scientists, already respected Kaim Jorchen mentioned about it. A conference of scientists and theologians at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, USA in 1979, focusing on the future of humanity. This significant conference attended by around 500 scientists and almost the same number of social scientists and theologians was mainly chaired by Paulus Mark Gregorius. There is no doubt that Christian teachings have contributed to the development of modern science. The astronomer Johannes Kepler described God as the eternal geometer who had created the world according to a mathematical plan that human minds could discover. The idea that science seeks to uncover the laws of nature thus owes its origin to an understanding of God's relation to the world, natural world. In his Principles of Philosophy, Descartes depicts the lawful motions of material bodies as acts of the deity. Scientists like Newton were trying to uncover these divine laws in nature. It was a commonplace thinking in the Middle Ages and early modern period that God had written two books, the Book of Nature and the Book of Scripture. This also contributed to the promotion of science, which was an attempt to read and understand the book of nature. But slowly, as you know, conflicts developed. However, the theory of heliocentrism of uh, Copernicus, proven by Galileo's experiments and Charles Darwin's theory of evolution, invited aggressive opposition from some Christian leaders. As a reaction, many thinkers tried to marginalize the Western Church which tried to suffocate the creative initiatives of the scientists and artists. The secular methodology was to dethrone the sovereign God and glorify reason as the new God. Mar Gregorios has written in detail 
especially in his book A Light to Bright about this European Enlightenment movement in the 18th and 19th centuries which was beautifully explained by respected Cain George. The mechanistic worldview of science was shattered in 20th, 20th century. It was also confirmed that science is not purely objective. Postmodernism also contributed to these changes. Mark Gregorius observes that even if science and technology flourished in this context, such a secular matrix is not inevitable for science and technology. Sci-tech. The unscientific assumptions of scientism is unhealthy. Science will not be able to give a meaningful explanation for origin and destiny of the world as well as the meaning of life. So, an integration of knowledge by making use of the scientific and the so-called unscientific traditions is essential and the yoke of the secular is not an essential matrix for science. Secularism, Indian context level. State in the Bhagatuna, Vivejanam Kudade, Discrimination Kudade Ule, Idavadilne Sujipikina, or adjective I turn it off. Secular and the other view again. Now, secular ideology, Anna, the remaining other Tirna Nolada, Mark and other. But Gregorio's theology gives a holistic vision which integrates faith and science beautifully. The ideal paradigm of reality to be held by believers should be the view that man and the universe are integral to each other and that the two together exist in God. This paradigm will give a different view of science as an activity taking place within God, not outside of Him. Being inside refers to that realm within God where His energies operate. In the light of Eastern Orthodox theology, Mark Gregorio says about science thus, God. It is God's energy that is studied. It is the same energy in man which studies it and God. Added to this, Mark Gregorius observes that the source of all knowledge and wisdom, all skill and power as understood by the ancient Christian writers, is the Holy Spirit. So he asks, why should we place the human activity of science and technology as having a source outside the Holy Spirit? He unequivocally says, quote, Once we recognize that science as well as faith come from God by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are on our way to a proper Christian integration of science and faith. We can make a distinction between the operation of the Holy Spirit in the created order and that in the church. The operations can be differentiated, but the source is one, and God. He was fully convinced about the fact that art and science, philosophy and faith, all are from the same operation of the Holy Spirit. In the context of the modern ecological crisis in current times, some secular thinkers like Lin Wei tried to blame Judeo-Christian tradition which believes in a sovereign God who gives a command to men to have dominion over earth as described in the first chapter of Genesis as the root cause of the issue. Some of the Renaissance writers validate this modern secular criticism against the Judeo-Christian religious tradition. For example, the English philosopher Francis Bacon, whose conception of the goals and methods of science was enormously influential during the 17th century and beyond argued that science was to be the means by which the human race would regain the control over nature that Adam had once enjoyed in paradise. Shastrum Sangeri Vidya Mukhe Sagalati Kirpati Bharikivanai Trulla Adam Inde Manishande Nashtrapata Voya Kadivine Vindadukkan Uladaya Ubagar Nangalai Tana, Ingin Orang Terjendal, 
പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുള്ളത് മർഗ്രീഗോർ വാസ് ടീച്ചിങ് ആസ് എ ഓൾ വാസ് എ കറക്റ്റീവ് ടു സച്ച് എ ഡിസ്ട്രോട്ടഡ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഓഫ് ക്രിസ്ത്യാനിറ്റി ഗോഡ് ആൻഡ് സയൻസ് മർഗ്രീഗോർ സെയ്സ് both the so called judeo christian notion of dominant terre as well as the judeo christian sovereign dominant god are themselves creations of a white male elite ruling class in the west insensitive to the needs and aspirations of the rest of humanity and the rest of nature science technology simply inherits and puts to work this notion in a secular context and god it must be noted that one of the foundational source materials for his teaching was the theology of the philosopher theology in st gregory of nyssa st gregory's brother st basil the great has written a beautiful interpretation about the divine command to rule over the earth in the creation according in the book of genesis as a call to have self control and to rule over dehumanizing passions മൃഗങ്ങളുടെ മേലുള്ളതായ മനുഷ്യന്റെ ആധിപത്യത്തെ കുറിച്ചുള്ള വിശദീകരണത്തിൽ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് വലിയ മാർബസേരിയോസ് ഇക്കാര്യം എടുത്തു പറയുന്നില്ല അത് ഉള്ളിലെ ദുർവികാരങ്ങളാകുന്ന മൃഗങ്ങളുടെ മേലുള്ളതായ ആധിപത്യത്തോട് ബന്ധപ്പെടുത്തിയാണ് പ്രസന്റ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇത് നേരത്തെ പറഞ്ഞതിൽ നിന്ന് നേരെ വ്യത്യസ്തമായിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു വ്യാഖ്യാനമാണ് Margrigorius observes that even most of the Christians in science and technology have not developed any ethical common commitment to the welfare of humanity inspired by the light of Jesus Christ. They pursue success and glory and money for themselves, not the way of the Son of Man who lived and died to serve the poor. So Jesus can be considered as an eye, a standard to see God, creation including human beings, and science and technology. Mar Gregorius presents theosis as a supreme goal of human life and defines it as a progressive separation from evil and advancement in the good. The model and inspiration for this is Jesus Christ. So it can be understood as becoming like Christ by being in communion with the Triune God. The sacramental grace nourishes this deification process. the gifts of the holy spirit are available to us in the community of the spirit precisely for this bearing fruit in love joy peace self control and heroically creative good or gregorius writes in his book science for same societies in this light we can understand his call for converting science and technology from their temptation for domination to an activity of love compassion and joy both science and religion need to be cautious about this perpetual struggle against evil and advancement in the good as mark gregorius rightly observes that technology which is power based on science enhances human power to create good or evil he says divorced from love and wisdom science technology becomes an enemy of humanity as it gives more power it has to be carefully watched so that the additional power does not serve the interests of the injustice oppression and exploitation both science and faith should be at the service of the good power at the service of wisdom and love for increase the creativity in the good be a creator in the image of god who is the most creative eternal being humans have the potential to be creative science enhances this human creativity deposited in the image of god in all and technology is an expression of this creativity so by using the tool of scientific we can shape our world and our own life in the light of theosis or deification mar gregorius was distressed by the fact that science is under the captivity of corporation and military establishment 
those who fund the scientific research naturally control it. Almost all researchers are thus controlled by the motive of unbridled profit and power. He says, pure science such as produced in the theory of relativity and quantum mechanics is a rarity these days. Not even 5% of the total investment in science is dedicated towards disinterested investigation of reality. More than 95% of it is geared to profit and war. Mark Gregorius laments about it. He is appreciating efforts of science and technology to meet the basic needs of people. So scientific research in food, health, security, clothing, shelter, communications, energy, know-how, transport and entertainment are necessary for ensuring the well-being of our life. What he is criticizing is military industrial banking complex which is committed to profit and power for the few, ignoring the basic needs of all the people. He thinks that the military industrial banking complex uses human basic needs to exploit and enslave the people in need. An example, as an example, he is drawing our attention to the problems of seed patenting by which the companies make all food production dependent on them. In this regard, he supports Ashish Nandi, the Indian thinker who argues that Western science is a captive of the establishment, determined to be used for exploitation and cultural destructiveness, and that Asia should develop an alternative science without the aggressive exploitative character of Western science. Mar Gregorius continuously envisages a world where science delivered from this captivity serves to meet the basic needs of all and ensures sustainable environment. Mar Gregorius used to expose the folly of piling up of arms and nuclear weapons and using lakhs of scientists in military research for finding out more effective ways of destroying others. While criticizing the Reagan administration's strategic defense plan or Star Wars, he wrote, Strategic defense plan is forbiddingly expensive, even for the U.S. In 1985-89, 27 billion U.S. dollars was allotted for a research program for developing a space-based defense system. If two billions of that amount could be set apart for humanly useful scientific or technological research in two-third world countries, this could substantially help alleviate poverty and ill health in the world. Even today, words are created for the display and selling of the most advanced products of military research. There was no active initiative for an amicable solution to the current war in Ukraine. According to Moscow Times, per day Russia alone is spending around 300 million US dollars for this war. That is equivalent to around 2,370 Indian rupees. This seems to be the least exaggerated amount in the media. Some accounts project this amount as even 20 billion dollars per day. This is in addition to the loss of lives and destruction of environment and infrastructure plus the adverse impact on millions of people in Ukraine and other countries all over the world. Already we have noted Mark Gregorio's strong plea that SciTech must be liberated from its bondage to war and profit and it pretends to be the only way of knowing and doing. SciTech should not be an oppressive dictator but a handmaid of humanity. Shastravum Sanghe Devidhi Oke Pidipikinna Uru Manishane Pidipichundi Kinu Deagadi Vadi Agade Manishane Shisru Shikinna Uru Shisru Shaga Aganam Kandamadar Saramad. Since Saitak civilization has no strong foundation, Margrigorius highlights our noble humanist heritage as a solid foundation. 
this is not the humanism of western liberalism which is without foundation but the noble humanism of the buddha and the gita of the quran and the bible of the guru grantha sahib and the sen rivers what is suggested is that psychic should not be allowed to become the shaper of our identity he was convinced that neither hindutva nor the ideology of secularism be foundational to the indian identity under the well intentioned leadership of nehru a secular or western liberal identity was opted in this country the development of hindutva late thrown indicates that this approach was not successful so without ignoring psychic we are invited to go beyond it to be rooted in our own rich and varied indian tradition a transcendent basis without being parochial or divisive is an important characteristic of this identity to counterbalance the negative points of site marketigorio suggests a few important values which he brings out of the indian heritage from the buddhist tradition the concepts of karuna and non dogmatism from the jain tradition the practice of austerity and self discipline from the gita tradition the noble concept of nishkama karma or productive activity not for one's own profit but as service to the community from the vedanta tradition the great concept of the unity of all beings based on which emerges unity of all humanity and a respectful attitude towards all life and all existence from the christian tradition the concept of love as active service to all humanity in need from the islamic tradition the concept of equality of all human beings from the sikh tradition the concept of being a disciple sikh ready to do battle for the truth disciplined and groomed for action and from the secular tradition the commitment to justice freedom and dignity of human beings and also the spirit of free enquiry when we take into consideration the magnitude of the rise of violence communalism exploitation of nature and ecological crisis family disintegration suicide rates cyber addiction and cyber crimes today we can easily appreciate this suggestion for the integration of a techno culture with traditional religious values which demands a vigilant struggle against dehumanizing and depersonalizing values form or the fear of missing out is keeping people glued to their devices in today's world of the social media and technology due to this fear we are pressurized to be over busy with our gadgets there may be many other reasons for such an addiction to technology the middle path theory of ancient gurus not only that of buddhist gurus but also of ancient christian writers like saint clement of alexandria will be useful in our relation to technology also we have to find the middle ground of not being an addict and not being ignorant to become responsible users of our technology without which we will be slaves of it not masters the spiritual vision behind lent and fasting will further enlighten us about it this is not the complete rejection of food considering it as sin but during lent and season we are avoiding certain types of food and also certain types of meals for a healthy physical and spiritual life lent and fasting ensures that we are not eaten by food but we eat it such a spiritual vision of moderation is also essential for a proper use of technology it was paulus mar gregorio's theological conviction that man is a co-creator of himself and his world 
Inspired by Saint Gregory of Nyssa, Mark Gregorius gives due importance to the human efforts to shape this world which is integral to the human vocation as the image of God. Science and technology which gives enormous power need to be used for this shaping of the world. The shaping of the world and the shaping of one's own life are also interlinked. As Bhakti Yoga, Jnana Yoga and Karma Yoga are connected to Moksha in the Indian spiritual tradition, Mar Gregorius gives a sound vision of the proper use of faith, science and technology. for human fulfillment. He says, Science and technology, liberated from the shackles of bondage to war and profit, and redeployed for the elimination of poverty, for wiping out ignorance and want, redeployed for helping humans to find meaning and fulfillment through serving each other so that all of us can live dignified lives. In this process, Mark Gregorius rightly recommends faith and science. Without controlling each other and acknowledging their own limits, must learn from each other, correct each other, and respect each other. He goes on to encourage faith and science to cooperate with other human endeavors like art and philosophy, music and literature, love and mercy, efforts for peace and justice, and so on to show the way for shaping a world and a humanity that more faithfully reflects the glory of God, which is the glory of men. Reading prescriptions is just the beginning only. May this international seminar on the occasion of the 100th birth anniversary of His Grace, Paulus Mar Gregorius, be an encouragement for many, not only to read this visionary doctor's prescriptions, but also to apply the medicines recommended by him for the health of our world and ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for your vivid talk. We are indeed blessed with the presence of Professor Dr. P. Burgess, former professor of CMS College Kotte, inviting most respected sir for the talk 